America's top diplomat and his Russian counterpart agreeing to keep diplomacy alive during a high-stakes meeting in Geneva as tensions mount over Ukraine. Secretary of State Antony Blinken vowing to respond to Russia's demands in writing next week, but he's already ruled out some of them, including the Kremlin's demand to reduce U.S. troops in Eastern Europe and barring Ukraine from ever joining the NATO alliance. New satellite images from this week show Russian tanks, battle groups, and artillery support equipment deployed at key locations near the Ukrainian border. Secretary Blinken doubled down on his warning, saying it's up to Russia to decide which path it wants to go down, diplomacy or confrontation and severe consequences. We've been clear. If any Russian military forces move across Ukraine's border, that's a renewed invasion. It will be met with swift severe and a united response from the United States and our partners and allies. Meantime, the United States is helping to bolster Ukraine's defenses. The New York Times reports the U.S. has authorized the delivery of anti-aircraft missiles to Ukrainian forces, and the Pentagon confirmed it's sending an aircraft carrier strike group to the Mediterranean for a NATO naval exercise amid tensions with Russia. The Defense Department insists it's been planned since 2020. Let's bring in Michael McFall, former U.S. ambassador to Russia and now a professor of political science at Stanford. Mr. Ambassador, what's your read on Vladimir Putin? Do you think he's decided yet whether or not to invade Ukraine? No, I don't. Uh, but I don't know. I want to make that clear. And nobody knows. Uh, President Biden doesn't know. The CIA director, Bill Burns, doesn't know. Nobody knows. Sergei Lavrov doesn't know. It's a mystery. And that's the way P Putin likes it. He doesn't like to show his cards. He plays them very tight. He has the capability, a massive capability, to invade uh, any day now if he wants. And he's been increasing that, particularly in Belarus. Uh, as Russian soldiers move into Belarus, that adds another dimension, another front to this war, should it happen. But I don't think we have uh, confirmation yet that he's made that decision. Well, Secretary Blinken is threatening a severe and united response to any Russian aggression or invasion of Ukraine, but are financial sanctions enough to deter Putin? Probably not. I mean, I applaud the, the uh, administration, the Biden administration, for, for laying out and I think co conveying, as he did today, my guess is he did today, Secretary Blinken did today with Foreign Minister Lavrov, the full multi-dimensional economic response that there will be. Uh, from what I understand and talking to administration officials, it's pretty comprehensive and it will cost the Russian economy a lot. But remember, it won't cost Vladimir Putin personally a lot. And that's the problem, right? Sanctions take time to have an effect, even in democracies, because it punishes people, punishes companies, and then the company's leaders say, hey, you know, Mr. President, Mr. Prime Minister, we gotta, we gotta change course. Russia's an autocracy. Russia's a dictatorship. So that doesn't happen very quickly and as efficiently inside that country. Therefore, at the end of the day, I don't think it's sufficient to stop him. And that's why I applaud. They have to keep continuing to try to find a negotiated solution. Well, if you're saying financial well, sanctions won't stop him, then that only leaves a military response if there is an invasion. Correct, but that military response will be from Ukraine, not from the United States. I, I don't see any conditions under which the United States would or should get involved in a conventional war with Russia over Ukraine. Um, but I do think we should be providing more equipment. It was interesting what you just reported, by the way, suggesting we're increasing our support. That support's already substantial, $650 million last year, by the way. Uh, U.S. military assistance to Ukraine. I think it should be more, though. At, at the end of the day, it's going to be Ukrainians trying to defend themselves against an attack. We should do all that we can to help them defend themselves. Very interesting. Mr. Ambassador, thank you for your time tonight.